Yo, what is going on everybody? I hope you guys are all having an amazing day. So, in today's video, I have something a little bit different. It's not gameplay. I'm actually going to be making a Discord profile picture. Um, so let's get into it. Um, first, you want to make sure that you have After Effects. Two, you want to make sure that you have the Saber plugin effect. Or actually, the Saber plugin installed to After Effects. Um, and three, this is for Discord Nitro users, as we're going to be making this whole thing animated. Um, and you have to have Discord Nitro in order for you to have an animated profile picture. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. So you want to make sure that you go to new project and new composition. Uh, very, very important. You want to make sure that your width is 128 pixels and your height is 128 pixels. Frame rate, I would say keep it at uh, 24 and duration, um, you could keep it at three. But the reason why this doesn't matter too much, uh, the duration really, um, is because I'm Go and hold um, your left mouse button and you're gonna go to a lip stool then you're gonna go to the upper left hand corner hold the left mouse button and then hold shift and drag out um, and you're gonna drag out until the boxes reach basically the edges of the of the box so I'm gonna keep mine here I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller I'm gonna keep it at that so Afterwards, uh, you should probably set your stroke to three and the color doesn't really matter to be honest because you're going to be doing something that will change the color to whatever you desire. So after that, you're going to go down to ellipse one. Um, you're going to click on it, go to fill one, then you're going to change the opacity of the fill to zero so that way it is only just a stroke. Now you may or may not see the actual uh, circle um, to do that you should just change the turn off the transparency grid um, so that you can see it a little bit better and then also if you didn't see the boxes that I was talking about um, here I will zoom in a little bit I was talking about these um, you may or may not have this thing turned on this is just the mask and shape pass visibility um, so you want to make sure that you have it turned on so that we could actually see you know the lines and everything so you know everything is you know actually what you want it to be so afterwards um what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you have you have your shape layer selected and then you're going to go to layer and pre-compose and do not forget to have move all attributes um to a new composition so you want to make sure that this is selected um and then afterwards you're going to go to auto trace now for auto trace, I would say to use channel alpha and then change your threshold to, I actually don't know exactly what you need to have your threshold. I would say that, um, yeah, I would say that maybe 28 is pretty good. Um, actually, I really honestly don't know. It's a little bit finicky with this, um, but let me try. I'm just gonna keep mine at one. No, I'm gonna type it at one, not zero. I wanna keep it at one for now. Um, yeah. And then afterwards, you can go into Saber. 
and you could drag that over your shape layer and then you're going to go to customize core layer type and layer mass and now you have a circle so yeah there's a circle so what you want to do you want to make sure that your render settings are we want to click on render settings then you're going to go down to composite settings and make sure that it is on transparent and then you could kind of turn your gif and kind of just start doing stuff so um i'm going to be using energize just because i found it's generally the best looking one um so first off you're going to notice that it's going to be a different color um you can obviously change it by the glow so what i would do i would change it to the main color of my gif better that would be a better word so i'm going to choose the hair because that's basically what's filling up most of the screen and i'm going to make it a little bit darker um because i don't want to have it just like this i'm going to have it more a little bit darker so after you have that um you want to change your glow intensity put it down put it down a bit um i would say somewhere in the range of 7 to 15 uh, yeah 11 11 to 15 um it's good yeah, i'd say 15 i'd say 18 is honestly perfect to be honest and then you can change your glow spread um but just know when you change it it makes things look a little bit weird so i would kind of leave it alone i would say just kind of have it at these settings um and then core size um i would say that two is pretty good but if you really want you can make it dimmer which wouldn't really work too well but definitely do not increase it past two because then it will get really large and start obscuring stuff as you can see so I'm going to keep mine at 2.80 uh, or 2.50. That actually seems good. So afterwards, um, really honestly, you could have it stop and then just be OK. Um, as you can see, the distortion effect is going kind of outside of the um, of the uh, the circle. And I would like to have it more on the inside. So maybe if I turn off invert, that might actually work. Yeah, so if you turn on invert for core distortion, core distortion, ugh, I can't speak for core distortion, it will be more on the inside, which will actually looks a little bit better. Okay, um, and then if you want, you know, change that glow spread, something a little bit, a little bit different. You definitely want it on something that's more soft. That is kind of the plan. So I would say, oh yeah, that actually looks, that actually looks really good. So yeah, if you want, you guys can copy these settings um, and change the color to whatever you want. So for you to inc incorporate your logo, it's actually pretty easy. So I'm going to incorporate um, the logo of my current uh, organization. You could say it's up and coming, but it isn't really too much yet, but we are trying to make it something. Um, so I would suggest that you are actually, I would say that it's kind of necessary for you to have a PNG and make sure when you import it, you don't scale it down to um, where you want it initially. Um, what you want to do, if I could scale this down, is that possible? Oh, wait, no. Yeah, this thing is freaking huge, man. But definitely, you want to scale it down so that way what you want of your logo is taking up almost all of the Discord profile space. So I would say you just want to take it, make it scale up to the entirety of the um, logo. I keep on saying logo, but I mean to say the, the box more to put in simpler terms all right so after when you have auto traced um i did mess up on mine a little bit so i'm going to see what happens after when i increase the threshold that doesn't seem right um 
So you might have to mess around with a little bit on yours. Okay, so after you auto traced your logo, there's mine. It looks kind of whack, um, but it's kind of whatever. This is just an example. Um, so then afterwards, after we've done that, uh, once again, you want to make sure that you have the transparent saver effect. And I would say go to Energize. Um, as Energize kind of like completely fills over the um, the logo. Fire could work too. You know, again, just gonna have to change the core size and core distortion and all that stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure fire only goes on the outside. Um, that might have been why when I tried to do it, it looked really weird. Yeah, so you're gonna see uh, fire. It kind of only goes for the outline of the of the thing. So I would say use energize, and then after the words, you can once again. Use the same color that you used to on your previous um i cannot be i'm really sorry but you can copy the color of your previous uh ring by just okay i'm sorry <laughs> but after you click on it just go back to the glow color click on it copy paste the hex code and then go back here and just copy paste the hex code so that way you have the same exact color and then you can change your glow distortion uh, or glow intensity in my bed and then go to core distortion and I would say put it at zero. So after when you have that, um, let me just play it back. All right, even if it looks like that, that is okay. So then you're going to finally scale this thing down to your desired, um, to your desired location. I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger. I would say somewhere like that. So, uh, you may notice some edges as you, you may, you may notice the edges. So to fix that, um, you might have to change the glow intensity down a little bit. Um, or the, it might be the glow spread. That might be why. Yeah. So yeah, just turn down the glow spread and then you should be okay. So then afterwards, you're going to add the effect CC Light Sweep. And you're going to drag that on the top of your logo. And then, actually no, I forgot to animate it. Um, so after you do that, you can see that after when you mess around with the direction, it kind of it kind of has a nice shimmering effect, but not now because the center of the shimmer, center of the effect is in the center of the logo. So what you want to do, you want to move the center thing, not this, this, um, you could also manually change the direction, but you want to have it so that way it's on the outer, um, you want to make sure so it's like towards the right of the logo. You don't want to have it in the logo because the light that's projecting out, um, you don't want to have it you know completely covering the logo it's kind of like when you're lighting a set almost so i want to have it kind of far out and then when you mess with the direction there's a nice sweeping effect uh you could also have it at the top or at the side i personally to have it um kind of at the top right so after when you do that um all you have to do is just animate it which is really really easy um, so there are two places where you can animate this effect. I will do it in this section. So simply all you have to do is you have to make sure that this blue thing is all the way at the end of your clip. Actually, you don't have to have it at the end. You could have it basically anywhere. So I will actually have it half a frame forward or actually that two frames. Um, you're going to press the stopwatch here. And then you're going to go all the way to the end and you're going to change the direction to one or two. It doesn't matter because then when you play it back, it's going to shimmer. It's going to go through the effect. So that way it looks like the thing is, you know, kind of shimmering through. So after when you have that, you're basically done with the effect. Now, I know that this doesn't, I mean, for me, compared to the other example, it doesn't really look as good, but I would say that um, with a little bit of fine tuning, you can make it a little bit better. Again, this is a tutorial, so 
I, I'm not trying to make it as perfect as possible. That is for you to do. Um, you can also change the aim, the my bad, the logo to be in between the um, the ring and the GIF, so that way if the GIF ever or the ring ever goes over the logo, it kind of adds a nice nice effect. Um, so after when you do that, you're going to go to edit, actually composition, and you're going to go to Adobe Media Render Queue, Adobe Media Encoder Queue. I cannot speak. Um, so we're going to wait for that to come up. It takes a while though. Okay. So after when you go to the media encoder, you, um, you're going to see your project in here and you want to make sure that you choose the preset, um, animated GIF. And you're probably going to see this connecting to the dynamic link server. You want to make sure that your format is an animated GIF. And you want to make sure that your source range is in your work area and basically that's that's basically it and then you want to make sure that you have it in a accessible place so I'm going to put it um, right here copy it over and then you just click on that green play button and then it's done it's really not that not that bad I don't know why something else opened up but I'm going to open this back up and as you can see there you go and as for proof of it working um i actually don't have discord next for myself but the thing that i showed um what we're going to be doing in the beginning of the video i actually made it for my friend atari so if i zoom in and click on this thing oh, i don't know why it's like that that's a little that's a little gay but if we zoom in on his you can see that you don't see the outer edge. It just looks like a ring is surrounding it. So yeah, there you go. That's how you make the effect. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know that I haven't made a video in a while. Um, I kind of just been making stuff for Aim Squad, our, um, an organization that I'm kind of taking part in. I'm basically making almost all, if not most of the content um the graphics all that stuff um for the organization right now but um yeah so that's kind of what i've been doing so yeah i'll see you guys hopefully very very soon and uh yeah thanks for watching peace